Welcome to my office here in Amsterdam. I'm very excited to share some news with you today. I want to talk to you about the evolution of a gravel racer. When you think about 100 years ago, all the roads were gravel or dirt, and so the bikes were gravel bikes. You know, the frames were sturdy, the tires were bigger, and you know, that's what you needed to not flat all the time and not have your bike break down. And then as the roads got smoother and smoother, you know, the tires could get narrower, we could introduce aerodynamics, and of course the speeds went up and up. And uh, of course, in my life, I've had a couple of aero bikes. And, um, but even though it was designed for the road, I still wanted to take it off-road because I just like going on these little paths and see where they take me. And so I'd uh, take my aero road bike and put the biggest tires in that I could. You know, 28 millimeter tires sort of fit once you scrape the paint off. And, you know, that was a lot of fun. You know, safer than getting hit by cars on the road, but also quite limited because of those tires. And so I started to think about you know, what bike do I have that I can fit bigger tires into? And there was one bike that I had, uh, which was the 2009 Paris Roubaix bike from Tor Hushoff, which happened to me sort of my size. And uh, with the help of Steve Head, I put uh, 32 millimeter cyclocross tires in, and that made a lot of difference. I did some gravel events with him in the United States, and uh, that was just a lot of fun. And that's when I realized that having that road rider position for speed, and then having bigger tires to take care of all the trouble, that was really, uh, where the world should be going. And I also realized that, yes, I could fit a little bit bigger tires in, but I wanted to fit a lot bigger tires in to really get the ultimate fun and to never have to stop for any sort of terrain. And that led, of course, to the introduction of the Exploro, which was the goal, you know, keep the road speed and then add the tire clearance. And a lot of people were surprised that it had aerodynamic features, but for us, you know, it was about keeping that road speed. And to do that, you need to get every little advantage you can get. And when we look at the Explorer, it sort of has three groups of customers. The first group we call the all roader. So that's uh, somebody with a road riding background that wants to get into gravel for fun or to avoid the cars. And they certainly do not want to give up that road speed. So the top speed is important, which means aerodynamics is important. You know, you put some bigger tires on to have some more grip uh, on road and off road. And you want to keep that aero road position. The second group is what we call the gravel racer. It can be a racer or just somebody who wants to be fast, but really focused on the gravel. So the on-road performance is not so important, the gravel performance where it's at. Still, you want aerodynamics to get the top speed there. Uh, you want to have tire clearance for gravel tires. And again, that aero road position to keep the speed. The third group is quite different. We call it the maximizer. And there, it's not really about that top speed but it's about you know, finishing before dark if you do an event, which they may, right? And they grab a race and might be trying to win it or be at the pointy end of the race. The maximizer just wants to get home in time. And so the requirements of that are a little bit different. The most important thing is to never walk. So you wanna put a bigger tire on so that you never sink into the mud and end up pushing your bike. You know, that, that racer is going faster so it gets to the mud easier. But when you go slow, you sink into everything. So you want a bigger tire to stay out of trouble. And of course, when you look at these, uh, these three groups of riders, you see that the setups uh, are roughly that the old rotor and the gravel racer, they're both looking for a 700C tire that's 35 to 40 millimeters and you know, a one by or two by drivetrain, whereas the maximizer is quite different. More often it's 650B uh, for the wheel and then you know, the width can be 47 to 54 millimeters and it's more often than not, it's a one by drivetrain. So when you really look at it, these three groups of riders have two types of setups. The first one for the all-roader and the gravel racer, we call the race setup. Doesn't mean you have to do races, it just means that you're looking for that speed for just going as fast as you can. And then the max setup, which is all about you know, anything to avoid walking. So we of course have the Explorer for that. Um, you know, it's still today the most aero gravel bike on the market, uh, which gives you therefore the most speed for that race customer, but it also has a ton of tire clearance. So it gives you, you know, good grip and everything for that maximizer customer. Today we introduced the Exploro Max. It's not replacing the current Exploro, it's sitting next to it. And what we've done there is we further optimized the aerodynamics. So that means more speed for that race customer, but we've also managed to fit a wider tire in. So we have even more grip and tire clearance for that max customer. So now how do you improve aerodynamics? and the tire clearance. Well, first you need to understand what size is this tire actually? Because of course the tire has a size and a label, but then when you go measure it, it's often very different. Tire width is not constant. It really is affected by three main 
uh, components and then some smaller ones. The first one is the width of the rim. As the inner width of the rim gets wider, the tire shape changes and the width, but also the radius of the whole tire changes. The second one is tire pressure. Of course, as you pump up the tire, it gets bigger and bigger. The third one is um, you know, the accuracy or honesty, depending on how you want to look at it, from the tire manufacturer. You know, it might say something on the label, but when you actually measure it, it could be quite different. And of course, it doesn't really matter that it says 40 millimeter on the label. What matters is if it's 40 millimeters once you've got it on your bike. So to solve this problem, we introduced two new definitions. The first one is tire ram, and that's the radius of the tire as measured. So the radius, simple, from the axle to the tip of the profile, and then when you look at this graph, you see on the horizontal axis, the RAM 19 means the radius as measured on a 19 millimeter inner width rim. The RAM 23, RAM 25, and of course RAM 29 is with a 29 millimeter inner width rim. So you can look at it and see here that that radius actually changes when you put it on a different rim. It doesn't change a lot, but still, you know, there's a couple millimeters here and there, and that matters if you're trying to get, you know, close fitting connections between, for example, your C-tube and your rear wheel, or between your front wheel and your down tube, which is, of course, good for aerodynamics, but not so good if your tire then touches your C-tube. So the tire wham, the width as measured, similar, just the width from side to side on these different uh, rims. And then you see a graph like that, and you know, there's two things that you should take from this graph. First of all, indeed, as the rim gets wider, the tire also gets wider. So, you know, a 38 millimeter tire on a, a 19 millimeter rim has about the same actual width as a 35 millimeter tire on this wide 29 millimeter rim. The second thing you should check here is that when you look at the red graph, that's a 38 millimeter tire. But even on the narrowest rim, that tire is already 40 millimeters wide. And then when you get to the wider uh, rims, as you can see here, it even goes up to 43 millimeters wide. So that tire is never what it's labeled. It's always much wider. When we look at all these tire sizes, put them in a graph, we see that there are a lot of tires that actually fit within a narrow band of rams. So within a narrow band of radii, there's a lot of tires that fit in there, which is perfect. That's what we want aerodynamically. If there's a lot of tires that are sort of grouped together, it means we can design around that group, really aerodynamically optimize it, um, you know, and have all these tires fit our frame. So that's great news. And that's how we do it. We need to have the tires first, and then we can design the aerodynamics around it. How do we design the aerodynamics? Well, first of all, we want to design around the tires that people actually use, not the tires that perform well in the wind tunnel. So for that all rotor, for that gravel racer, for that maximizer, use the actual tires people want to use. Secondly, we want to use realistic speeds, right? So 20 miles an hour or 32 kilometers an hour, not just the super speeds that are normally used in the wind tunnel. Uh, we also want to check different wind speeds. We want to sometimes test with mud on the, t on the frame because we know that it does get muddy where you ride a gravel bike. And of course, we want to test with water bottles. It's very hard to do a long gravel ride without water. So uh, we want to test with real conditions. So that means your starting position looks something like this, right? We've determined the group of tires we want to fit on this bike. We've determined that we want these water bottles, and now we need to design a frame around that. And so it might look something like this. And when you look at this, you, a couple things you can notice quite, uh, quite quickly. First of all, because you know this exact dimensions of these tires you want to fit, you can get quite close fit and cut out between the C-tube and the rear tire while still having uh, mud clearance. Same on the front, when you look at that gap between the down tube and the front tire, that's a gap you normally see more on a road bike than on a gravel bike. On a gravel bike, you know, that gap is usually quite big. But when you know what size the tire actually is, you don't need that big a gap. And here is the result, the 3T Explorer Race Max. As you can see, we have quite a tight fitting rear wheel cutout, but because we know the exact tire radii that we want to uh, use in this bike. We still have enough clearance for the mud. Again, also on the front, we have a pretty tight clearance between the down tube and the front tire. We look at the down tube itself. As you can see, it's quite massive at the bottom portion of it. So it is the width matching 
the water bottle that sits behind it so it fully shields the water bottle as you look higher up it narrows down to 46 millimeters wide which is perfect to take up that airflow that comes off of that 35 to 40 millimeter front tire whether it's a big road tire or a gravel tire also um, the depth of the down tube uh, changes from size to size so on the smaller sizes it's not quite as deep so the, the ride isn't as harsh because you often get that with smaller frames that they get you know more and more vertically stiff so by reducing that depth uh, we counterbalance that then you see the chain stays uh, dropped so both chain stays are dropped for more stiffness more tire clearance uh, we have direct mount front and rear for the brake calipers so without any adapters you just mount the calipers directly onto the frame and it's set correctly for 160 millimeter rotors. The through axles front and rear are Sintes because it's really the best system out there. We haven't gone for some lever design or some you know semi dropout design which yes may be a second faster when you have a flat tire but it's better just to not have any flat tires and have a good tubeless setup uh, than to give up half your stiffness just because maybe sometimes uh, you want to save a second. Maybe the thing I'm most proud of uh, the head tube. So when you look at the dimensions of the head tube, it's really a pure road bike head tube. So it's dimensioned for basically a one and an eighth to one and a quarter inch steerer. But in fact, the steerer that's inside of it is one and an eighth to one and a half. So there's a big steerer inside it, but the head tube's still small. And we do that with a custom bearing. And so the advantages there is that the head tube's narrow for aerodynamics. The steerer is big for stiffness and strength, and that custom bearing that we make, even though it looks small, it still has the same load bearing capacity as a normal one and an inch headset. Also, the axle to crown distance of this fork is 370 millimeters, and that's the same as a normal road bike. We do that by having quite a minimal crown. And so that distance, that length of the fork is about an inch less, 25 millimeters less than it would be on a gravel bike. And so by doing that, by having a pure road fork length, you know, the whole geometry for steering and everything can be much more road-like. Uh, we have fender mounts front and rear hidden in the system uh, and just lots and lots of little details. Uh, the Ritchie system for the saddle clamp which has basically become the standard, it's really completely hassle-free. Uh, a hidden uh, self-adjusting angle for the clamp here so with a lower load you have better seat post clamping. Really details all over the place. Um, and of course, uh, on the website, you can, uh, you can see all those details uh, a little bit easier. But having a great frame set alone, we thought was not enough. We also wanted to do something else. And the, the one area really that we felt needed improvement was in the wheels. Because, you know, wheels are always important. It's no different with gravel, but there aren't really any aero gravel wheels. All the wheels are simply too narrow. If you have a 35 to 40 millimeter wide tire, you also need a wide rim. So the new 4540 discus wheel set that we have, the rim is 40 millimeters wide and 45 millimeters deep. So it's really massive, it's quite amazing, uh, but when you ride it I think you'll be quite surprised. It's, uh, it's very fast, very smooth and uh, a very different experience. And because it's so wide it has a 29 millimeter inner width. So there's the number that you may have seen before on those graphs about uh, tire wham and tire ram, that's why. So, you know, it can use a relatively narrow tire and still, when you put it on that rim, it balloons up to quite a high width. So you can have a very light tire and still have that width of 38 or 40 millimeters that you, uh, that you might be looking for. Then, of course, for the handlebars, it's not on this particular model, but we've recently launched a new line of aero uh, drop bars and those are really also meant for the Explorer Race Max. So we have the uh, Aero Flux which is an aero wing with a traditional style drop, perfect for that race customer. And then we have the Aero Gaia, which is also the aero wing, but then with a, a multi-flare drop, so that it's perfect for a, you know, a wider handstands if you have trickier terrain, so perfect for that max customer. That's really all I have to say here about the bike. If you have any questions, I think you know where to, uh, where to find us. And uh, for now, thank you very much for watching.